Hi folks, it's Darcy from thepurposefulpantry.com. Welcome back to another edition of Dry Simber, where we take a bite-sized chunk out of learning to dehydrate all month long. Now for those purists out there, I know you're gonna say, why would you dehydrate something that's already been so overly processed and is already preserved? And that's a valid point. However, there are some reasons why you want to, you might want to use canned foods in your dehydrating process because it gives you some better choices, more choices. More choices are always good. So let's talk about those reasons why you might want to dehydrate canned food. One is because of texture issue. There are some things that you might prefer the texture of a canned product versus a fresh product. Case in point for me, I really prefer dry canned pineapple over dried fresh pineapple. I think there's something in that processing that breaks down the fibers more that make it a better texture for me uh, from canned than from fresh because that's a personal preference for me. So I buy canned pineapple not only to eat but also to dry to have those pineapple snacks. Another reason might be because it's a way to make your canned food a little more versatile. Especially with uh, fruits, you can actually dry those fruits if you're finding that you don't like them fresh or that you need to find another way to serve them. Um, you can go ahead and dry them and have like fruit snacks that are done already. It's already cut for you, already prepped for you, you just have to dry it and go. So a third option is to make leathers and powders out of purees. Things like pumpkin puree, tomato paste, tomato sauces, some, some spaghetti sauces can actually be stored in a smaller footprint than their sauce. And so for some of us, it makes more sense that if we can't process enough of that fresh that we use the canned version, then go ahead and process them into a dry leather or, or powder to take up much less space in our pantry than to store enough for a year. So case in point, pumpkin. I love pumpkin. I love to add it to things to flavor it. I love to add it for the nutrition. Um, and it's a really great food that's very versatile. So what I will do is I will buy enough canned pumpkin for me for the year on top of what I try to process every fall that I can never get enough, have enough time to do enough. So I supplement that with canned. Then what I will do is I will dry the can into a leather and or powder it. So I can store that in a much smaller footprint than if I try to store all of those cans for the year. So it makes it more versatile for me to use throughout the year. I use a lot of pumpkin powder in things. So it makes a lot of sense to me to do this. It takes up less space and I'm not having to waste a lot of space in the pantry on all those cans of powder. Uh, all those cans of puree. The same thing with tomato paste. I don't use a ton, so I don't see the point of storing a bunch of cans in my pantry to have it. I will buy once a year, I will buy enough tomato paste for the year. I will dry it, I will leather it, and then I will often uh, go ahead and powder it for about six months worth. And I have two jars as opposed to all those little jars that are taking up space in my pantry. So that's another option. For some people, if you're running into a Best Buy date that's coming up, they prefer to go ahead then and dry it to extend that shelf life and they know that they've got some other options to use it. There are also issues with people who have space issues where they can't produce enough fresh, they can't get enough fresh and so they rely on canned, but they also have very small storage areas. So what they will do is buy what they can get, dry it and store it as dried and that way they have they have the ability to store more in a smaller space than trying to dry, trying to store all of those cans. And the last issue is accessibility. We have people that live in this country and who live around the world who live in food deserts where fresh good food is simply not available or it's so expensive it's inaccessible to them. So their options are to buy canned foods and even frozen and dry those things if they want to store them that way because that's more accessible and affordable to their income and where they live. So those are reasons why you might want to dry canned foods. Now I'm going to tell you not all canned foods work well dried and I don't bother doing all canned foods because it's just not worth it. And for those of you who home can, yes, you can can your food if you find you're not using it quickly enough, you can dehydrate it to use in other ways. That's perfectly fine too. Just remember those rules, no fats, no oils, no animal proteins. Those are the best things not to dehydrate for long-term food storage. So I hope that helped you with whether or not you want to dehydrate your canned foods. If you missed yesterday's video, it's right here. The whole series is available to you right here to catch up on. You can subscribe to my channel here to find out more about dehydrating and in the coming months, everything that's going on. And I appreciate you so much joining me for another edition of Dry Simber.